We are going to dive into 5.6 today, talking about geometric sequences. Uh, and we mentioned this in class, somebody asked about it. Uh, a geometric sequence is when we're continuing to multiply by the same thing over and over and over again. So the ratio R will not appear in the first one because it's just going to be the base A. But that is actually times R to the zero, which remember anything to the zero power is one. So then we have A times R, A times R squared, A times R cubed. Uh, because we're continuing to multiply by 10 every time we go. So make sure that this makes sense. A recursive formula is something that uses a previous value. So like a sub n minus 1 is the previous term from the sequence. So since we're multiplying the previous term by something, the same something every time, uh, this is a recursive formula. An explicit does not use the previous term. So here we just use the beginning term, and then we say times the ratio r to the number of terms minus one, and we often use as the number of terms. Please make sure you've worked through the Pearson module to make it to this point, uh, to the got it. Try these on your own, see if there's a common ratio. Uh, if it's a common ratio of multiplication, that makes it geometric. If it's a common ratio of addition or subtraction, that makes it arithmetic. And if it's neither, then it's just not, um, not a geometric or arithmetic sequence. So for our first sequence here, we can see the terms are continually doubling or multiplying by two. So that does in fact make it geometric. Pause the video and try the others if you have not. So in B, if you try to find a multiplication that works, it does not work out for long because we do times two and then that doesn't work. Uh, but that brings me to the think over here and how we find a common ratio between consecutive terms is you can just take the larger term and divide it by the previous term. So here, if we do that with all of those, we get that common ratio of two. Uh, but here we see that addition of three will work. So it ends up being an arithmetic sequence. Now, in situations like C, it sometimes throws people for a loop, so take a moment, think about this, try it on your own. For C, I can look for that common ratio by doing this division, and then we would, of course, do keep change flip. When I put 27 over 81, I get one third when I reduce and simplify. Same thing here, and same thing for each of them. So yes, it is geometric with a ratio of one third. So we see here in D that addition does not work. So we can take 7 fourths, this first ratio, and 11 sevenths, the second ratio, set them equal because if it is uh, a geometric sequence, that ratio will be equal. We can cross multiply to see if their proportion is equal and it is not equal. So this is neither. So as we see here, any geometric sequence can be written with both explicit and recursive formulas. So we're going to look down here and make sure that we can find both of those for any geometric sequence. So first thing we want to do is think about what is the ratio and then what's the starting term? Are we going to make it recursive or explicit? So Pearson may um, set this up the other way as me. It does not matter because multiplication is commutative. But if we check for the ratio here to begin with, we find a ratio of two is consistent throughout. And my first term is two. So uh, my first term doesn't matter quite yet because if I start with a recursive, then all I'm gonna say is, hey, the term before what you just had, multiply that by two. Now that only works if the term we're at is greater than or equal to two. Because think about it, two minus one, we get the first term. An explicit formula for here uses the first term of the sequence times the ratio to the power of n minus one. Pause the video and make sure that you can do this for b. Find a recursive and explicit for that sequence. So then when we set up the recursive formula, we have our a sub n minus one times the ratio of one half. And when we set up the, or this is our recursive, when we set up our explicit, uh, we have the beginning term times the ratio to n minus one. So go ahead, pause the video and try this. I'm gonna use a recursive formula on the uh, first and an explicit formula on the second problem here. When we set up our recursive formula here, it's our ratio of six 
times a to the n minus 1. But in order to find our eighth term, we'd have to know what the seventh term was. And since we don't, we just go ahead and decide not to use this. Now we can discuss that deeper in class if you'd like. Uh, but for now, let's just use an explicit formula. So we'll set up a to the n equals our first term 14 times our ratio 6 to the n minus 1. And n here is going to be 8. So now we can say this is 14 times 6 to the 8 minus 1, or 7. So that's really 6 to the 7th times 14. So see what you get with that. We get 3,919,104. Try on B to do the same thing over again, um, checking first our ratio here, and then set up an explicit formula to solve it. For B here, we have a ratio of 1 half, and if we keep having and having and having, we actually, at the eighth term, end up with 81 divided by 16, or approximately 5.0625. Pause for a second and figure out the recursive and the explicit formulas for this sequence. You don't have anything to solve, just make sure that you can write out the uh, formulas. And here are your explicit and recursive formulas for th this sequence. So pause and then try to graph the first five points. Uh, the first point is actually going to be pretty tough to graph, but at least graph points two through five for this graph. Pause and try now. Again, I am very bad at drawing these graphs on um, the Smart tab, especially since this is a curve. So here is what the graph would look like. Uh, my first point when 1 is minus 1, that would be 0, so it would just be at 2, but then we'd be at 2, 6, 3, 18, 4, 54, and 5, and 1, 62. So making my exponential head up right there. All right, I just misspoke. It's not y exponential like in the sense that we had been talking um, but it is basically an exponential so that is all that I have for you on 5 6 and uh, please make sure everything makes sense let me know what questions you have and uh, we will go from there I will see you later